the Germ Bugs project is, a, is an attempt to improve the microbiology education of medical undergraduates. We want medical students to be good doctors and they will be good doctors in 10 years and 20 years time. So I want doctors in 10 years and 20 years time to remember their microbiology education. They won't remember lectures, they will remember the germ bugs, I hope. Every good idea starts with a cup of tea, and this one is no different. So Andrew Kirby and I were sitting having cups of tea one day, uh, talking about work and chatting about um, our experiences as, as parents of young children telling stories at bedtime. And Andrew came up with the idea that when we tell stories, information comes across much better. And so we came up with the idea of using character-based stories to tell a story of an infection and a, and a bug um, to medical students. Well, stories is the way that we all learn. It's the way humans have always learned. It's the way that we um, make sense of our lives. Through the visual stories that we've created for germ bugs, um, you can see processes in action. You can see these, these um, bacteria as, as characters, and that really aids in understanding. My name's Becca. I'm an intercalating student this year and as part of my degree I've had the opportunity to get involved with the germ bugs. Um, I'm writing a dissertation um, evaluating its um, integration into the second year curriculum this year. So in my second year we didn't have the resource available um, but having interacted with it this year I actually have remembered some microbiology content unintentionally <laughs> um, and I found myself talking to um, someone in my family about an infection they'd had and one of the germ bugs came up and I was like, oh, I actually remember all of this stuff. Living in the nose turns the bacteria who live there green thanks to all that snot. So we call bacteria who spend most of their time in the nose the green bacteria. The main green bacteria living in the nose is Alan Oreas, one of the green explorers. Alan has sticky hands so he can hang about in the nose however he wants. So when I was interviewing the second year, some of them mentioned how um, learning things in a more broken down format helps them teach it to other people. Resources like this, where it's broken down, it's memorable, it's in a story, you can try and mimic that when you're explaining things to patients. So the resource was really developed to allow students to understand microbiology more. What was an unanticipated benefit of the resource was it helped them uh, communicate microbiology to patients. So that was a, a big moment in our understanding of the power of this resource. In 20 years time, I think we'll see a whole lot more of this sort of thing. You know, we'll have 20, 30 years of, of people really realizing the importance of, of learning through interaction and learning through participation. Developing teaching resources uh, in innovative ways is everybody's responsibility, really. So if you're thinking about starting a new type of resource for yourselves, I would just say get stuck in. Don't think about all the obstacles ahead. There are many, but if you've got a good idea, hopefully people will see that idea and help you along the way. Look around you for colleagues who have the expertise to make that dream a reality and absolutely involve students because often they're our best teachers.